Hello everyone, welcome to another episode here on the Wandering Quill YouTube channel. I'm your host, Gilbert Garcia, otherwise known as the Wandering Scribe and the Wandering Quill. I know it's been a while since I've done another one of these uh, book reviews, but I decided to take this opportunity to read not one, not two, but three books from the same author. And the first book we'll be reading is, of course, The Prisoner in the Sky of the Wing series by F.R. Columbrana. Now, this book, from what I've been told by the author, is a steampunk fantasy novel in which angels rule over Earth. And just that alone intrigues my curiosity. And I'm excited to read these books because, in a some way, it reminds me of my own book that I am working on, of a similar title and of a similar genre. And in case you're wondering why I keep looking from my screen to another part, it's because I have the ebook version. Now, if you want to purchase the physical copy of all three books, I will link them down below for you to purchase them. Without further ado, let us read the first book in the Wing series entitled The Prisoner in the Sky by F.R. Colum Brana. Preface, excerpt from A History of Gaia, Volume 1. On Gaia, monsters ruled the world, plunging it into darkness and chaos. Then, God the Creator, alongside his children, the archangels Akasis, Suror, and Lum, banished the monsters deep underground. The three were imbued with powers from God, separating them from the rest of their race. Akasis was the angel of death, Susuro was the angel of lightning. And Lumen was the angel of light. These divine beings were capable of feats of great destruction and united their powers forced the monsters into the pit. The Zack brought Gaia out of the chaos and into the world it is today. With the monsters underground, God could work on his next creation, humans. God created the humans and they lived alongside the angels and other creatures on Gaia. Cities grew and both species prospered. God wanted to show that humans and angels could coexist, but Akasis despised humans. He believed Gaia was not worth sharing with such powerless beings who had not earned their place in the world he fought to mold. News of interspecies offspring would set him on a course that would change Gaia forever again. When he learned that humans and angels had procreated, he was furious. He was set out to end the humans once and for all. Akasis plotted to kill all the humans and leave only the angels as the sole rulers of Gaia. In addition to sympathizing angels, he would recruit the archangels Susuro and Lumen in his plot. The angels, peaceful by nature, did not expect it. Akasis started burning cities to the ground, sparing only the angels. This would mark the beginning of the angels' civil war. And the author makes a note in this. Years marked A.W. for after war pertain to the Angel Civil War. Brief transition. The surviving angels fled back to paradise and pleaded with God to put an end to Augustus' rampage. God tried, but he could not convince his son to live peacefully with the humans. Augustus, with the aid of Susuro and Lumen, overpowered God. Defeated, God came up with a plan back in paradise. It was a latchdest effort. God granted some humans the ability to use magic to help him fight against Akasis, but this was a great cost. God was left weak and vulnerable, but his actions did turn fortune back in his favor. These humans grew butterfly wings on their backs and formed a new race called the Pixies. Feeling overwhelmed, Akasis ordered Suro to create a poison to kill all the humans should he be defeated. Susuro's concoction would poison the plant's water, sparing no human. However, behind both Akasis and Susuro's backs, Lumen changed the formula, making it harmless. 
Lumen had changed sides and was now fighting for God. With his help, God and the Pixies were able to defeat Oxus and Susuro in the last battle. Oxus was killed in the battle, creating a crater where he died and scarring the land, leaving a desert that would last for ages. Susuro was taken back alive to be imprisoned in the Sky Fortress hidden in the Fergus Mountains, protected by Valkyries. For their aid against Oxus, God gave the Pixies a kingdom of their own. To Lumen, he bestowed dominion over the remaining humans and Nephilim, the children of angels and human pairings. In addition, Lumen had a responsibility to keep a watchful eye on the Flying Fortress and the prisoner within. Finally, God and the remaining angels of Gaia reclosed themselves in the kingdom of paradise, in the lands unknown, shuddered away from the world. Part 1 a Dying King Chapter 1 A Vision In the year 823 AW Month Quinn Day Number 4 A bright burning object left a dazzling red trail behind it as it flew across the sky. Look, Kyan, a meteor streaks across the night sky. Lumen spoke softly from the balcony in his tower. This is a foreboding sign. This was no ordinary meteor shower. This was a singular event. Below his window, the king could see hundreds of his subjects crowding the streets looking at the meteor above in amazement. It burned so brightly, Lumen could almost make out the faces of those below. Kayan gazed upon his king, taking his sight off the spectacle outside. It appeared as if now, after hundreds of years, his age had finally caught up with him. Of course, he was no ordinary being. He was an archangel, the most supreme being on Gaia besides God. Now Lumen looked frail, and his wings looked malformed and lacked the feathers needed for flight, a shadow of the angel he once was. Foreboding indeed, sir, Kyan finally replied. You've been my loyal servant for a long time, Kyan. I will need your help now more than ever. If not for the hour and my tired state, I would have us prepare for the worst at once. For now, let us call it a night, shall we? Let the people enjoy the spectacle outside. Lumen proceeded to move towards his bed. I will leave for the night, sir. Kion bowed and left the room. Kion and his lineage have provided great steward for Lumen since he has been their king. Since he has become ruler, he has seen his kingdom grow so much. Several cities had come under his control. Haven, capital city for the humans and the city in which he resided, was an industrial marvel of brick, stone, and steel. <clears throat> Although he could not provide his subject magic, the humans had provided for themselves in ways he could never have anticipated. Since they began utilizing steam and coal as fuel, they have developed such industrial marvels. Boats were improved upon and motorbikes could move them across vast distances quickly. Greatest of all, albeit concerning to the king, was the creation of steam-powered walkers, which were solely created as machines of war. In it, a human could commit such violent acts. Lumen shook away the thought and pondered on his other subjects, the Nephilim, those humans with angel blood in their bodies living harmoniously with the humans. Centuries ago, when he moved to Haven, he rejected any notion of Nephilim being superior to humans in any way. Just as God intended, since then they have been living almost amongst humans in upper and lower levels of society. Some knew they had this blood in them. They could trace it to their family history. However, none really knew the true power they held within. They had lived as humans for centuries now. There was a time when they rivaled me. Best to keep some secrets for myself for the peace of the kingdom, Lumen whispered to himself. He put an arm on the headboard to support himself, and now this great angel can barely make it under these soft covers. Lumen had to make a bit of an effort to put himself into bed. Despite thinking he was immortal, his age was catching up to him. He pondered on his successor should, the term, should his term on Gaia finally come to an end. Only God can live forever. I was foolish to think otherwise. My life should have ended centuries ago with my soul back in paradise. Only someone who has been haunted by death can live this long. My brother's departure, parting gift, or curse. It doesn't matter. My people need a ruler. The question is who? A human or a Nephilim? 
I should let them decide for themselves. Comfortable in bed, he closed his eyes. He thought of an old prophecy. The three had prophesied a meteor would be the beginning of the end. Old and twisted pixies, remnants of the angel civil war like him. He could never trust him, but with matters of the future, they were rarely wrong. Their words unnerved him. Lumen felt in his heart the world would forever change. But he shrugged it off. This old angel needed his energy to plan for a successor. Then, he fell asleep. That night a vision came upon Lumen. In his vision, he was surrounded by m multitudes dying. A black earth and a red sky. The ground shook from below as monstrous claws and fangs broke free. He stood in a vast desert where he could see two opposing figures in the midst of chaos. A vile and evil winged demon hovered in the air before, an an before another figure he could barely make out. Lightning struck all around as the pair prepared for their confrontation. Then, in the blink of an eye, it was over. Lumen awoke sweaty and scared. He knew exactly what this was. For in the time of Oxus Rebellion, his father would send him similar dreams. Some lifelike and real. It would pain his father so much to do so. Only in extremes would he do this. It was a decision. For God would show him moments when one act could spell hope or ruin for the world. He called for Kyan, and a servant went quickly to fetch him. Within minutes, Kyan opened the doors to Lumen's chambers and walked in. A little groggy from the wakening. My lord, you called for me. What ails you at this late hour? Kion asked. Before him, he saw Lumen scared, trying to catch his breath. God has sent me a vision, Kion. We must indeed prepare for the worst at once. We must start securing our borders. I fear for the veil. Starting tomorrow, we will prepare our forces. I believe monsters may be upon us. As Lumen told Kion this, he frantically searched his guest for a paper and quill. Finally, he caught his breath. He set down the paper and quill and grabbed Kion. Kion? There is one more thing we must plan. And we actually will stop here. Now, just from the preface and just from the first chapter, this already is a very different take on fantasy with angels and demons. I really like how the author has reinterpreted the angelic civil war. And what's really interesting is that they're not the typical angels that we see in traditional uh, religion. The names are very unique, although one could argue that they do share similarities with angels we see in Judeo-Christian uh, teachings. Uh, Michael, Gabriel, Uriel, Raphael... Uh, Lucifer and other angels so, uh, so forth all in all this is a very good read and I am extremely thankful for the author for sharing me this ebook version for me to read and do a in-depth review later on but for now for my initial impressions this is easily a 5 out of 5 it reads very well it's very unique it paints a world starting from the center and going outward we know a little bit we don't know too much yet but it sprinkles in a little bit of imagination which i greatly appreciate and i cannot wait to continue reading this series so be on the lookout for the next two books that i'll be reading well listeners i hope you enjoyed this wandering quill book impressions and i will see you in the next episode for the second and third book in the series. And this has been The Wandering Scribe and The Wandering Quill, signing out.